Now let's say we um, continue the titration until we've added 100 milliliters total of sodium hydroxide. Now we've added 100 milliliters total, starting with nothing. So let's uh, try to analyze this. So what would the pH be here? We have point, so if you, if you put that much NaOH, then you have 0.01 in the first equation, so then you'd have 0.01 um, moles of H plus over 150 mil milliliters. You might have taken a wrong turn there. Let's see. How much nitric acid are we starting with? 0.01 moles. Yeah, that hasn't changed. We still have the 0.01 moles. And how much sodium hydroxide are we starting with now? Point. Work that out on paper. 0.01. 100 milliliters is so it's 0.1 liters. which I don't think was your earlier guesses, possibly. Yeah, was it? Yeah. OK. So and again, I would do this on paper. So we have 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide and 100 milliliters, which is 0.1 liters. So I would actually do on paper 0.1 times 0.1. Well, 1 times 1 is 1. There's two decimal points up here, so there should be two decimal points in our answer. So that gives us 0.01. That changes this number to 0.01. So then that, that would, so all of the 0.01 would be bad for both? That's right. And in a sense, they're both the limiting reagents. So then you get 0.01 nitric acid, so 0.01 um, hydronium ions. Also, with the, in the next, in the next. Take time. our time. How much nitric acid did we start here? 0.01 moles. And how much nitric acid are we using up? Oh, it's zero. That's right. And how much sodium hydroxide are we going to have left? Zero. So we don't go on to this step. Uh, yeah. Remember, the reason we went on to this step before was because after the acid reacted with the base, there was still some acid left over. But in this case, there's no acid left over. So we don't need this next step. So we're not going to go on to this step because there is no nitric acid to react with the water. It's all reacting with the sodium hydroxide. So what's the pH going to be? Seven. That's right. Now how do we get that from our pictures here? Well, one, one thing that we haven't talked about that we should have talked about is that in most problems there's two different sources of hydronium. One source of hydronium is the acid or base, but the other source of hydronium is just the water. Remember that even water just standing by itself would naturally give you 10 to the negative 7 of hydronium. If you just have pure water, it would just give you 10 to the negative 7 of hydronium. So that's one source of hydronium just from the water. And the other source of hydronium is from the acid or the base. Now, when you actually took chemistry in school, you learned how to deal with problems when you have to take into account both the hydronium from the water and the hydronium from the acid. But that's too hard for your test because you can't use a calculator. So on your test, they're always going to give you problems where you only need to pay attention to the hydronium from the water, or you only need to pay attention to the hydronium from the acid. Well, in this case, obviously, we're not going to pay attention to the hydronium from the acid, because there is none. It's been completely neutralized. So now we have to think about the hydronium from the water, which would be 10 to the negative 7. Concentration of hydronium will be 10 to the negative 7 from the water. So as you said, the pH would be 7. OK. Now, this is a problem that if we understand what's going on, we can do the whole thing without any calculations at all. Basically, what we're doing here is we're adding exactly as much base as we started with acid. Yeah. So the base is going to completely neutralize the acid, and we're going to have a neutral solution. The base is completely neutralizing the acid, so we end up with a neutral solution with a pH of 7. So once we understand that, we don't have to go write down all the stuff. But this is the kind of the thought process we would go through in our head. 
In the previous problems that we did before, we ignored the hydronium from the water because there was hydronium from the acid, and that overwhelmed the hydronium from the water. Compared to the hydronium from the acid, which was like 10 to the negative 1 or 10 to the negative 2, the, the little 10 to the negative 7 from the water was, was minuscule. But in this case, there was no hydronium from the acid, so we had to pay attention to the hydronium from the water. Now, there's a special name for this point that we're at right now. This is the equivalence point. That's right. What is the equivalence point? The equivalence point is when you've added equivalent amounts of acid and base. That is when the number of moles of acid is equivalent to the number of moles of base. The equivalence point is when the number of moles of acid is equivalent to the number of moles of base. Well, you can see here they are equivalent. We've added 0.01 moles of base, and that's equivalent to the amount of acid that we started with. So we can see that when we have a strong acid and a strong base, what's the pH at the equivalence point? Seven. Seven. And something that is not so obvious from the math, but that you need to have memorized, is the equivalence point a steep or a shallow portion on the graph? Steep. steep. We're just going to basically memorize that. In fact, the equivalence point is the steepest point on the graph. So you might just be given a bunch of graphs and asked to identify the equivalence point. Well, the equivalence point is the steep point on the graph. The equivalence point is the steep point on the graph. And for a strong acid and base, uh, a strong acid and strong base titrated together, the pH would be 7 there. And that's really just common sense because we've added enough base to completely neutralize the acid. So let's see what things here gave us some difficulty. I, I think you actually did see that we were going to have 0.01 sodium hydroxide, but I think that you were thinking that then we have extra acid or base left over. And that's exactly the point that I was making earlier. What is it that's so challenging about titration that it's mixing up all the different cases? We just got finished looking at a case where we had acid left over after the first step. So then it was natural to try to apply the same approach over here. So that's the thing that makes titration so difficult. Uh, a single titration graph can have many different cases. And so you have to be very clear in your mind about which case you're dealing with. So we've dealt with three cases so far. Here we had the strong acid by itself. Here we had the strong acid reacting with the strong base, and there was some acid left over. So it could react with the water. And here we have the strong acid and strong base reacting, so there's no acid or base left over. So those are all different cases. And notice that all of these problems here I've given you would have been very fair game on the test. If you understand how to do them, none of them involve very involved calculations. None of the calculations were very hard. It was the setup that was hard. Now let's say we have 150 milliliters of sodium hydroxide. So we've added 150 milliliters total of sodium hydroxide. So it looks like you're using this table here. We still, all of these problems have got 0.01 moles of acid. That's not changing. And you just figured out that we had 0.015 sodium hydroxide. And now the limiting reagent is the nitric acid. But the reaction is still going to completion. So it looks like that's what you got. Good. So you know NaOH is a strong base, so right. 0.001 is 
Before I even get to that, let me just point out one thing that's a good test taking strategy. What you should do next is check the choices. Do we expect the pH to be now acidic, basic, or neutral? That's right. Maybe there's only one basic choice, and then you can avoid all this work. That actually happens more often than you would think. So we really need to get into the habit of checking the choices once we know whether the answer will be acidic, basic, or neutral. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Oh. Yeah, absolutely. The test is designed not just to reward your science knowledge, but to reward smart test taking skills. So, okay, but anyway, I interrupted you. What would you do next to calculate that? So, I mean, could you just from that under POH and then subtract that from 14? Yeah, let's go ahead and finish that off. Okay, so 